brauchen. So the plan for this 2024 Eclipse trip for us was to go to Lampasas, Texas, which was to be almost directly in the center line of the eclipse, which means we would get the maximum amount of totality, which was about 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, we made the plans, we spent a bunch of money on reservations, and despite the weather forecast of mostly cloudy, we just went ahead and hit the road. Some of our friends uh, went to other places around the country and had a uh, more cloudless experience, which is great. Uh, we stuck with the original plan. Uh, it ended up being a pretty difficult trip due to the weather. Uh, super windy and miserable uh, for the first couple days of that trip on our way down. Uh, I think we had to get off the interstate uh, on two separate occasions to get around overturned vehicles. So let's talk about the eclipse itself. So I didn't do much planning uh, as I normally would have because I really wasn't planning on seeing anything uh, but the clouds. But then we got there and the clouds cleared and I had to rush into a plan. Uh, in the process, I forgot to start my screen recording uh, when the eclipse started. And then uh, I ended up turning it on after the moon had started covering half the sun, I guess. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do was capture the moon kind of gobbling up some sunspots. Uh, the sun wasn't very cooperative. There were hardly any sunspots, just a couple small ones. Uh, which was completely different than the recent history where we've had quite a few pretty extravagant and large sunspots. Uh, but the sun wasn't cooperating today, just like the clouds. Um, so that idea was kind of a bust, but I did capture it. So this is some of the raw footage and you can see the cloud cover I was dealing with. And then this is the final animation that I put together by taking frames in between the clouds. After that, it was just a matter of waiting for totality and hoping the clouds would clear. In the process, somehow my telescope got out of focus. I didn't touch anything. I'm not sure what caused it. Maybe it's just changes in the atmosphere due to weather moving through or probably more likely just changes in the temperature of my scope itself. I had an opportunity to see that and I didn't correct for it, which ended up costing me some precious seconds during totality. So totality hit, and I started executing my rough plan, which was to scan around uh, the edge of the moon slash sun and look for solar prominences, those pink uh, areas of uh, gas that are shooting out from the sun. Um, it, I immediately found one uh, below where my telescope was and realized at that point I was out of focus. I fumbled around for way too long getting my electronic focuser app up and by the time I had it in focus and almost in perfect timing I got it in focus and then a cloud moved in over, uh, over the eclipse. That's it. Uh, it's just a little out of focus. So a couple minutes of totality went by above the clouds, it seemed like an eternity. And by the time the clouds parted, I knew I'd only have a few moments to capture something. So I grabbed my phone quick and shot a, a short video and then went back to my telescope to try to attempt anything at all and just failed miserably at that. Uh, and by that time it was at four minutes and 20 seconds went by, uh, mostly misery. It was a cool experience uh, to see it again. I had already seen the 2017 iteration of it from Wyoming. Uh, it certainly wasn't wasted time. Uh, I can tell you though, after 2017, there's nothing like experiencing totality with absolutely zero clouds. Uh, time just appears to stand still for those minutes when you don't have clouds flying through the air. Uh, but it was, it was a good trip and here's to better luck in 2045. Thanks for watching.